what made you decide to actually go into, you know, Major League Baseball? Yeah, I mean, baseball kind of found me. Um, interestingly enough, I was a, a, a tennis player growing up and had a bunch of shoulder problems myself. Um, kind of ended my tennis career, to be honest. I mean, I, I worked at a, at a tennis club for eight summers. I strung rackets, gave lessons, you name it. And then, sure enough, um, when I decided strength edition was for me and, and I initially went to the private sector, I picked up a lot of odds and ends just on how to take care of my own shoulder. I managed to avoid, avoid short, uh, surgery with it. And so when I got to the private sector and you know started working with a few baseball guys, I, I really realized that they were an underserved population. Um, you know, we kind of always just got like the, the foo-foo rotator cuff band program. <laughs> Or they got like the, hey, just do what the football guys do. And, you know, there was a happy medium where you could push guys hard as long as you were aware of the, you know, the true functional demands of the sport and what unique adaptations they had. So um, just kind of found this little, you know, kind of niche in the industry. And, and over the course of time, we, we carved it out more and more and became much more specialized. Um, you know, so that was at the time high school guys. And then, you know, they became college guys. College guys become pro guys. You know, they've got agents, they've got teammates, and the referrals, you know, kind of just started coming to, to build us to what we are today, where it's, you know, it's not just strength addition, it's skill development, there's physical therapy, there's massage therapy, there's all these different uh, layers to it with, you know, Phil, like, like built out analytics slash tech department. Um, mm -hmm. And then on, on the, you know, kind of major league side of things, you know, as, you know, time wore on and, um, you know, we got more and more results with guys in the private sector and, you know, had more and more high profile players and, and really you know a lot of younger players that were getting selected in the amateur draft you know and our relationships with major league organizations strengthened um, you know, over the years I had kind of several offers uh, more for consulting roles just because you know I don't think very often they look at you and as an employee when you have your own gig like that um, particularly ones that has some momentum on its mm -hmm. side so um, I actually consulted for the Minnesota Twins um, for 2018-2019 uh, really more in just like a, an opportunity to like test the waters, you know, dip my foot in the shallow end and see what kind of role I would, I would play in professional baseball and if it was a good fit. Um, and so that was a, you know, a compelling opportunity. The Yankees reached out um, at the end of 2019 and um, we were able to work something out where I actually have a much broader role where I oversee nutrition, I oversee strength conditioning and, and some of the manual therapy initiatives in our organization and really kind of have my hands in a lot of different departments. Um, so this is my fourth, fourth year with the org, and you know, there's everything from doing amateur draft stuff. You know, spending I'm, I'm with the team right now at, on, on a road trip, so um, it just uh, it's fun because you get to ex be exposed to a lot of really smart people, lost a lot of across a lot of different departments, and really learn how all the pieces fit together. That's unbelievable. There's so many thoughts that I had with that. Number one, a former athlete of mine who then became a colleague uh, here at Iowa, Mark Weissman. He's now the director of minor league baseball strength and conditioning for the Cubs. So, like, he was – I just heard a podcast that he had, and he was talking about how, you know, that world a little bit works. And it's unbelievable what those guys are doing. And then, like, the – how often do you have to be communicating with them just in terms of, like, if somebody gets called up, somebody gets called down to just be communicating all the time, like, in – how for anybody that's listening like okay how can they take that principle to then apply it into their high performance world because you've got even more moving pieces quick break from the show to remind you to hit that like and subscribe button it helps us out and it helps you be notified when we have new content get released so again please hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoy this content and with that let's get back to the show yeah, so there are a couple ways I'll answer that. The first thing is you, you mentioned communication, and it, it's paramount. Like, you, you have to make sure that you build out a staff of, of effective communicators because if you have someone that, that doesn't line up with that initiative, like, scale is impossible. And so, you know, if you're in the college setting, right, you get 30 athletes that come into your weight room, you know their schedule throughout the day, you know, their class schedule, their practice schedule, their lifting schedule, all that stuff. Baseball is different, right? So we have, you know, Major League, Triple A, Double A. Hi, low A, then you have your FCL team at your complex. You have a Dominican Academy. Mm -hmm. So you're really, you know, in, in our department, you, you know, you've effectively got dozens of staff members across not just multiple zip codes, but different, like states, different countries. Um, and so there's a lot of moving parts. And that, that's really just speaking to the athletes, right? You also have, you know, front office that need to make decisions from afar with respect to roster management and things like that. You have injured athletes who may be going for second opinions with doctors on the other side of the country. Um, you know, you have vendors that you're communicating with as you're, you know, we've, we've actually changed out some of our minor league affiliates. So outfitting weight rooms at different stadiums and doing renovations. Um, there's always a lot of things going on. It's just that, that's, I think, what a lot of people don't understand about professional baseball is just how big organizations are where, 
Um, you know, you basically have your roster limits domestically of 180 players. So that's effectively your minor league players in the U.S. Then you have your 26-man major league roster. So you're at 206. And then you've got a number of players that are on either the, the 60-day or the full season IL that don't kind of count against those numbers. So that might be, you know, 215 players. And then you have another 90 at your, your Dominican Academy, which you're allowed to have. So before you know it, you're dealing with 300 athletes. So where that leads to is my second point is that it's never just about being smart. Like you can go to every seminar you want, learn every nuanced technique. For me, like where the rubber meets the road on whether I'm effective at my job is how well I teach and how well I, you know, I, I select and mentor good staff that help to, you know, carry out the, the vision that I have for our department and, you know, how well I communicate it. So it's, um, it's really all about scale in professional sports. It's not, it's not okay just to be progressive. Everybody can be progressive. If they read another book or go to another seminar, it's all about how do you make it work for a kid that you may have never met that's in the Dominican Republic that we just signed it, you know, at age 17 and we've got to help him get to where he needs to be. So. Yeah, listening to that and hearing not only just how big the roster is, but like you said, you're going to have some scale between that 17-year-old kid and then, I mean, shoot, like Albert Pujols was in the league. Is he still or used to, like he's, he's, he's commentating now, but he's not but, far. Yeah. Okay, so he not far. Like that's my point is like you could have a 40-year-old dude in baseball because, you know, it's not as uh, – you don't get – there's no contact. So yeah. there's still difficulties, and I'm not here saying – like baseball, the schedule – That'll wear on you, first of all. But the fact that you could have a 17-year-old kid and a 44-year-old kid. like Taking a quick break from the show to talk to you guys about our sponsor, Team Builder. If you have any online training platform needs, Team Builder is the go-to place. Team Builder has the ability to integrate with velocity-based training tools. They have the ability to program and have notes and videos for all of your athletes and your clients. This is your number one-stop shop. Been using it since 2019 when I was working at Towson, so... I've used it, love it. Make sure you check it out. Go ahead, click the link down in the description. And with that, let's get back to the show. It's a big deal. Di- Cause you know, you and I both know youth athletic development, you get an untrained 17 year old. It's, it's not a hard program to write. No. It's actually much more about like reaffirming the importance of consistency, nutrition, sleep, all these different things. But you have to escalate development because there's, there's a benefit to getting that kid to the big leagues at 21. You know what I mean? That's a, that's a really big deal where he's going to deliver a ton of value for the major league roster if you can accelerate his development. Whereas, like, if you're talking about a kid that might not play baseball after college, like, you, you have got a little bit more of an on-ramp. <clears throat> and, you know, like that and, like, the private sector, the game schedule is, is very, very different. Like, a high school kid, um, you know, like, we have, we have 21-year-old players playing major league baseball right now that are playing 162-game season. Like, they're, they're not – it's not common that you get somebody that young, but, like – you know, you look at like a Juan Soto. I think Soto came up before his 20th birthday. Yeah, he was young. He was special. And, you know, he's been a very durable player and, you know, he's been out there and playing very consistently. But, like, you know, he was pretty physically mature. There, there are a lot of, like, 19-year-olds that are still untrained kids that are still getting to know their college strength coach for the first time. So you, you always have to hit it on an individual level, which becomes extra challenging when you have that many guys. So – you and I were talking off, for our listeners, you, we were talking off air because my cousin, Steve Ciszek, is the reason, you know, we, we connected because Steve was one of your athletes. Um, I remember one of the times I was watching Steve play in Florida or Miami at the time and then um, waiting for him to leave the, the clubhouse and uh, Stanton was leaving the locker room at the same time. And you want to talk about physically blessed. I was like, okay, that dude, I'm like, I'm 6'3", played college football, weighed 300. Now I walk at like 245. And I'm like looking up at this guy like, yeah, God put him on this earth to go hit baseballs. Like, specimen. Um, But then you also, you talked about college baseball. And one of the questions that I had was, um, I never, and maybe it was just some of the places that I was at, but I never realized how much college college baseball athletes, like, they get after it. They're almost one of, like, they're slanging and banging in there. And then Weissman just the other day talked about it, um, and Stevie did too, about how, like, you know, once you kind of make it to the pros, it's more about maintaining. And I guess my question is, at what point does the switch flip from, like, hey, we got to clang and bang to, like, okay, I got to make sure I'm maintaining or whatnot throughout that development for college into professional yeah, that's a great point. I mean, the first thing I'll say is that the big leaguers come in all shapes and sizes, right? And, and baseball is a unique sport because sometimes it's not just raw athleticism that, that gets you there. Um, sometimes it's, it's traits, you know, it's characteristics. Um, 
you know, and in some cases guys are really hypermobile, right? In some cases they got, you know, a freaky long middle finger that helps them to throw a better cutter or something like that. Congratulations on making it to the end of the video. Why don't you celebrate by watching more videos just like it? You can also help us on our quest to placate the algorithm gods by liking, sharing, subscribing, and commenting. Thank you.